This is Restoration Bible Church and Ministries. We are a people of excellence living purposefully. And now, here is God's servant, Rev. Tunde Balanta, as he brings you God's Word. We trust that you will be blessed as you listen. We're going to look at the Word of God briefly this morning on the praise and worship kill. The praise and worship kill. Let's take our foundation scripture from Hebrews 13, 15. The Bible says, By him therefore let us offer the sacrifice of praise to him continually. That is the fruit of our lips. Giving praise to his name. The Bible says, let us offer the sacrifice of praise, the praise and worship cure. Sometimes praise is not convenient. That's why the Bible calls it a sacrifice. That means, you know, in the New Testament, we don't kill animals for sacrifice. Your sacrifice is the fruit of your lips. It's what you say in the time of challenges, the sacrifice of praise. Praise and worship bring the atmosphere of heaven to earth. Praise and worship bring the atmosphere of heaven to earth. In Isaiah chapter 6, from verse 1, the Bible says, In the year King Uzziah died, Isaiah saw the Lord sitting upon a throne high and lifted up, and his train filled the temple. Above it stood the seraphims, each one had six wings, with twain he covered his face, and with twain he covered his feet, and with twain he did fly. And one cried unto another and said, Holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. And the post of the door moved at the voice of him that cried, and the house was filled with smoke. Then said I, Woe is me, for I am undone, because I am a man of unclean lips. I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips, for my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. That is the atmosphere of heaven. Isaiah 61 verse 3 says, Isaiah 61 verse 3, To appoint unto them that mourn in Zion, to give unto them beauty for ashes, and the oil of joy for mourning, and the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they might be called the trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he might be glorified. Friends, when you begin to praise and worship him, you bring the atmosphere of heaven. Isaiah, when he saw the Lord, he said the place was filled with smoke. It was filled with the presence of the Lord. When you begin to worship and in praise and worship, the atmosphere of heaven comes down. Demons of depression and fear cannot hold you. It doesn't matter what you are going through, how miserable the devil wants you to look. If you begin to praise and worship God, be the lifting up of your hands, you are making a sacrifice to God. In that moment, in that situation, as you worship God in that moment, friends, things begin to change in the realm of the spirit because the presence of God begins to come down. You can drive away every spirit of depression, every spirit of fear, every challenge in your life, you can drive them out with the spirit of praise and worship. Because when God comes into a situation, child of God, demons cannot stay in the same room with the Holy Ghost. If the devil has been harassing you, he's been letting you look at the challenges of this life and telling you it's not working, I want to announce to you this morning that your story can change this morning. You can praise God in the midst of your pain. Sometimes there's pain in the offering. Sometimes there's pain in the offering because as you begin to worship him, your head tells you it's not working. But I want to tell you the presence of God. The Bible says God indwells the praises of his people. I don't know where you are to day, maybe the devil thinks he has put you in a corner. Maybe they've even tied your hands and they've tied your feet and they are flogging your back like, like Paul and Silas. But child of God, the devil has not been able to close your mouth. I said the devil has not been able to close your mouth because your mouth is still open. You can release praise and worship even in a prison cell. I said you can release praise and worship even in a prison cell. I want to announce to you the situation in Nigeria may be making many people 
people afraid. But for a child of God, you can bring heaven down to earth. I say you can bring heaven down to earth. And when heaven comes down to earth, things are going to change for your children. Things are going to change for your family. 2023 is not going to end badly for you. It doesn't matter how it looks right now. I am praising God over and above everything happening around me. That's where money will come to your house when they say there's no money. Money will come to you when they say there's no money. Health and healing will be your portion when they say there's no healing anywhere. Because when you create the atmosphere of heaven, God himself comes to take a seat in your house. And I say when God has taken a seat in your house, people will find you. People will honor you. Is there a child of God in this house? You are different. You are a chosen generation. A royal priesthood. You are a priest unto God. A peculiar people. I say you are a royal priesthood. You are a peculiar people. You have been called forth to show the praises of him who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light, which in time past were not a people, but now you are the people of God. When you begin to lift those hands over and above your situation right now, the God of heaven begins to come down. I said the God of heaven is coming down on behalf of your family, on behalf of your children, on behalf of your finances. I'm here to announce that your story is going to change this morning. Why don't somebody lift your hand and worship the Lord and say, I choose to praise God over what is happening around me. I choose to praise God over the bad news around me. I am a praiser. I am a worshiper. Wave that hand and give him three shouts of hallelujah this morning. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Have you ever sit, seen a fly sitting on a hot stove? Women, when you are cooking in the kitchen, when fly are perching, they are looking for something that is, that is not hot. They don't perch on a hot stove. When you begin to praise God, it gets hot around you. Demons begin to leave the place. Hallelujah to Jesus. Ah. In the same vein, Praise and worship stir up the anointing. Praise and worship will do what? They stir up the anointing. I love the story in 2 Kings chapter 3. Let's go to 2 Kings chapter 3. Uh, God is doing something. No? Hmm. Verse 14. You remember when Elisha was called, and he was told that um, they wanted to hear from the Lord from him. And Elisha said, as the Lord of hosts liveth, I think I will take that reading a little bit back. Second Kings three, I will go to just to give you. Some of us may not know this story. Let's say we back up to like eleven. That would be good. Uh, but Jehoshaphat, Second Kings three eleven. But Jehoshaphat said, "Is there not here a prophet of the Lord that we may inquire of the Lord by him?" And one of the king of Israel's servants answered and said, "Here is Elisha, the son of Shaphat." which poured water on the hands of Elijah. And Jehoshaphat said, The word of the Lord is with him. So the king of Israel and Jehoshaphat and the king of Edom went down to him. And Elisha said unto the king of Israel, What have I to do with thee? Get thee to the prophets of thy father, to the prophets of thy mother. And the king of Israel said unto him, Nay, for the Lord had called these three kings together to deliver them into the hand of Moab. And Elisha said, as the Lord of hosts liveth, before whom I stand, surely, were it not that I regard the presence of Jehoshaphat, the king of Judah, I will not look towards thee nor see thee. But now, bring me a minstrel. And it came to pass, when the minstrel played, that the hand of the Lord came upon him. You see, praise and worship will stir the anointing. Elisha just couldn't operate because of the presence of the king uh, uh, of Israel. He was an evil man. But the moment he began to play that minstrel, the hand of the Lord came upon him. When you are in a dry place, child of God, when you are in a place that it looks like nothing is happening, and the devil is trying to make you regret that you were ever there, you can begin 
like, like to begin to worship God. Ephesians chapter 5 from verse 18 says, Be not drunk with wine wherein is excess, but be filled, be continually filled with the Holy Ghost, speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. How many of you know that the situation we live in today, there are many reasons for people to cast their hope away. There are many reasons for people to frown their face. But I want to say the Holy Ghost is alive on your inside. You can stir up yourself when everybody is looking crazy. You can lift your hand and begin to worship God and stir up that oil. When the minstrel was played, the hand of the Lord came upon uh, uh, Elisha. I believe the hand of the Lord will come upon somebody to declare the future. To, the hand of the Lord will come upon somebody for victory this week. When your mouth feels like running the wrong way, lift your hands uh, and if you pray in tongues, if you don't know what to say, begin to bless God in tongues and say, Father, I bless you. If, if your English has dried up, you can begin to say, Christo la mahasahande kitaya. That water of life will begin to rise up on your inside. It will stir up the anointing. The Bible says, Beloved, in Jude chapter 20, building up yourself on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. The more you pray in the Holy Ghost, the more the, the anointing and the oil of God is stirred up in your life. Is there a witness in the house of the Lord this morning? We're talking about the praise and worship cure. Praise and worship are an aroma to God, but a suffocation to the enemy. Say with me, praise and worship are an aroma to God, but a suffocation to the enemy. Psalm chapter 8, verse 2, and Psalm 14, verse 12. Psalm chapter 8, verse 2 says, Out of the mouth of babes and sucklings hath thou ordained strength, because of thine enemies, that thou mightest steal the enemy and the avenger. Now you know a baby has no strength of his own. Sometimes you feel helpless like a baby. You face it and say, To, Abu Yaga Gareni. Do you understand what I'm saying? You look at it and say, God, I don't even know what to do about this. This is too much for me. You are tired. You, you, you don't even know how to deal with it. When you feel helpless like a baby, and you begin to give God praise because he's God, and you begin to worship him because he's God, God says strength will come to you. Supernatural strength is coming to you. Because you can choose to complain, and you can choose to worship. Whichever road you take is how quickly you are going to get an answer. So it says, out of the mouth of babes and suckling has done ordained praise, that um, thou mightest steal the enemy and the avenger. And Psalm 141, 141 verse 2 says, Let my prayer be set forth before thee as an incense, and the lifting up of my hands as the evening sacrifice. That word incense really means sweet perfume. It also means fumigation. That Hebrew word incense there means sweet perfume. It also means fumigation. Do you know that people use incense to bring good things and to drive bad things away, isn't it? Incense can be sweet perfume that God enjoys. Amen? Comes to God as a, ah, you know? Abel's sacrifice was very pleasing to God. God said, ah. There are some perfumes that when you sense them, you, you, you want to be around. Huh? There are some perfume people wear. When you sense them, you say, wow, wow, that's nice. You don't even want to leave the person. So let me be walking around you. It's just a perfume. But there are other ones. <laughs> The other one, so I said, oh, you, you just want to do like, he said, why are you moving back? He said, no problem. I, let me take another seat. Those kind of Turarin Gabas type. <laughs> for real perfume, you don't have to wear very much for good quality. But the one you are doing, from head to down, something is wrong with that perfume. You know, some people put perfume, they even turn back and put at their back. That perfume was very, very cheap. But quality perfume, you just have to put pin, pin, finish. Somebody who knows perfume, when he stands there, he'll say, hmm. 
So when we worship God, if it's coming from the heart, that is the sweet perfume. God can tell, and I'm going to add another thing now. I haven't differentiated much between praise and worship. I'll talk about that another time. But, you know, but they are both sacrifice. They are not convenient. Amen? In praise, you are basically saying to God, thanking him for what he has done in your life, for, for his greatness, for his power. But in worship, you go to surrender. Hallelujah. Praise. Thank you for healing me. Thank you for delivering me. Amen? Thank you for your mighty power. What he has done. What he is able to do. You are adoring him. But when you come into worship, you come into the realm of surrender. Hallelujah. And God, both of them must come from the heart. Jesus said those who worship must worship him in spirit and in truth. Hallelujah to Jesus. Now, friends, let's take one more story. Um, God can hear each of us individually. That means when you are worshiping him, when you are praising him. Go to Genesis 22. The sacrifice of worship is surrender that releases God's agenda for your future. The sacrifice of worship is surrender that releases God's agenda for your future. Genesis 22, 5. You know the story, God told Abraham, take your son, thy only son whom thou lovest, uh, to the mountain that I will show you. And they went on that journey and they came there. In verse 5, and Abraham said unto his young men, Abide ye here with the ass, and I and the lad will go yonder and what? Ah, you are not there yet. Genesis 22, 5 is up on the screen. And Abraham said unto his young men, Abide ye here with the ass, and I and the lad will go yonder and, and, and come again to you. But God told him to go and sacrifice that boy. He said, we are going to come back. He said, when you are a worshiper, your, your dream can never die. When you are a worshiper, your dream can never die. It may look like it's dying, but because you are bowing your knee before the creator of the earth, every human institution will bow before you. Let's go to verse 9. And he came to the place which God had told him of. And Abraham built an altar there and laid the wood on in order and bound Isaac his son and laid him on the altar upon the wood. And Abraham stretched forth his hand and took the knife to slay his son. Let's pause there. I and the lad will go yonder and worship and come again to you. But he's tying the boy up. Is raising a knife. I and the lad will go yonder and worship and come again to you. I and the lad will go yonder and worship and come again to you. He's tying his boy on the altar. He's raising a knife over the boy. Sometimes life seems to tie you up on the altar and it looks like the dream. Oh, it looks like the dream that you have or you have had is trying to die right on that altar of surrender. But I'm here to announce to a child of God everything born of God overcometh the world. I'm here to announce to a child of God that what God doeth is forever. Nothing can be taken from it. Nothing can be added so that men will fear him. When it seems like your dream is dying on the altar of sacrifice, I want to say that you will come again to that dream. That dream will not die. That dream will not die. That dream will not die. That vision will not die. That project will not die. That business Business will not die. That marriage will not die. Your future will not die because the God of heaven, the God of heaven, he can see your worship. Can I get a better amen in the house of the Lord? The dream of worshipers cannot die. Other people's dream might die. It may look like you will never get married, but your, your wedding card is on the way. I say your wedding card is on the way. It may look like you will never have your babies, but your babies are on the way this morning because you are a worshiper and you are laying that vision on the altar of God. Now let's go down a little bit. Now, 
Hmm, verse 11. And, then, and the angel of the Lord called unto him out of heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham, he said, here am I. And he said, lay not thy hand upon the lad, neither do thou anything unto him. For now I know that thou fearest God, seeing that thou hast not withheld thy son, thine only son, from me. And Abraham lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, behind him a ram caught in the ticket. And Abraham called the name of the place Jehovah Jireh. And, and then let's go to verse um, 15. And the angel of the Lord called unto Abraham out of heaven the second time and said, By myself have I sworn, said the Lord, for because thou hast done this thing and hast not with thee thy son, thine only son, that in blessing I will bless thee and I will multiply thee thy seed as the stars of the heaven, as, as the sand which is upon the seashore, and thy seed shall possess the gates of his enemies, and in thy seed shall all the nations of, of, the, of the earth be blessed because thou hast heard my voice. Jump, let's go to John chapter 8, <clears throat> verse 56. To 59. Write it down. John 8, 56 to 59. Your father Abraham rejoiced to see my day, and he saw it, and he was glad. Your father Abraham re rejoiced to see my day, and he saw it, and was glad. Then said the Jews unto him, Thou art not yet fifty years old, and hast thou seen Abraham? And Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Before Abraham was, I am. Now look at this. When Abraham puts his son on the altar on Mount Moriah, it's not an accident that Mount Calvary, where Jesus was crucified, is on the ranges of the same mountain. The angel came and said unto him, Because you did not withhold your son, through you all the nations of the earth shall be blessed. And Jesus later on said, Abraham saw my day. You see, when you are a worshiper, because Abraham worshipped with his best, God released the agenda for the future to him. When you spend time, when you are going through certain things in your life, and instead of being uh, crestfallen and getting confused, you choose to worship God. You choose to place God above everything else. You place God above everything else. There's another example in the Bible. We don't have the time to go there. But you, you, you place God above everything else and say, God, I just, I worship you. It's not convenient, but I am worshiping. This was surrender. That word there, when he said, that word to worship means, in, in that scripture means to fall down. You know, sometimes you cannot clap, but you can fall down. Do you understand what I'm saying? That word, that, that word worship there, let, let me give you the meaning of that word worship there. It, it, it's not the same as praise. Halal, hallelujah, where we get hallelujah, to praise, to adore him. But this word worship here, it actually means <laughs> to prostrate, to crouch, to bow down, to fall down, to, to do obeisance, to stoop. All that has to do with, there are some times in life that all you have to do is, Baba, I don't understand it all, but I am. Baba, I don't understand it all, but I am. Baba, I don't understand it all, but I am. My mouth feels like saying something else, but I am. It seems like it's not going to happen, but I am. God is going to begin to reveal your future. As in the moments of challenges, you learn to praise and worship in surrender. I want to say to you, there's nothing in your life that is bigger than God. If you have never seen a miracle before, you saw some this weekend. Was there anybody here this weekend? If you were in the services we had, can you wave your hand? If you were in church, please wave your hand well if you were in church. Do you still doubt that God does miracles? If you can do those ones, Somebody said for 31 years, I've not be, I'm not talking. And the person is talking. I'm blind for 10 years. The person is seeing. I'm dead for four years. I'm blind for five. All kinds of things happen here. That is God for you. It's just somebody who wants to lift their hands this morning. And give God the honor he deserves. Give God the honor he deserves in your life. Because that problem you are worshiping is not bigger than God. Oh, I said that problem you are worshipping is not bigger than God. I said that problem you are worshipping is not bigger than God. 
I don't care who has come against you, but it's not bigger than God. I want you to lift your hands this morning. Let's take some time to just appreciate him for his goodness, uh, for his mercy, for his goodness, for his mercy. I'm going to open this altar for a few minutes, just a few minutes. If you feel like you have a need to come before the Lord this morning and say, Lord, I am coming to surrender. I am coming to surrender. You have a few minutes to do that. Come and use the altar if you want to. Just come. Just come and use this altar if you want to. You have a few minutes to come before the Lord. I'm coming in surrender, Father. I'm coming in worship. I'm testifying. I'm testifying this morning that that problem is not bigger than you. That challenge in my life is not bigger than you. Come from everywhere. Just worship him. You have a few minutes. You have a few minutes this morning. Father, I'm lifting my hands and I'm thanking you. I'm thanking you. Thank you for miracles on every side. Thank you for what you've done. Thank you for what you are doing this morning. Father, we give you praise this morning. Child of God, there will be a turnaround. I am praying now. I am praying now. I am praying now. Father, in the name of Jesus. For everybody who has humbled themselves before your throne this morning, you are the miracle walking Father. And there's nothing too hard for you to do. We have seen your physical miracles. The blind have been seeing, the deaf hearing, the crippled walking. Father, for every other kind of need that people may have this morning, I speak the miracle of God over you in the name of Jesus. Let every yoke be broken. I speak financial favor, financial miracles. I wrestle your children from the hands of the enemy. I wrestle your business from the hands of the enemy. I wrestle your tomorrow from the hands of the enemy. Every gang up of hell against you, I cause them to fail. In the name of Jesus. Father, I give you praise and I give you glory. In Jesus' mighty name. Thank you for listening to today's message. Do join us same time next week. Follow us on our social media handles, Facebook and Instagram at Restoration Ministries International, Twitter and Mixilar at RBCM Online, and our website is www.rbcmonline.org. You can also be part of our live power park services every Wednesday by 5.30 p.m. and on Sunday by 7 a.m. and 8.30 a.m. respectively at Restoration International Conference Center, RICC, Romanew Extension, Kaduna South. God bless you.